And if you're just joining us, this is Daybreak on Trust Television, reaching you live from the nation's capital. Now let's get into our first discussion of the day, which is on the impasse between the um, doctors and the federal government. Now the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors have declared an indefinite strike for some days now, demanding the implementation of the one-for-one -one replacement policy for healthcare workers, the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria to discontinue the downgrading of the membership certificate issued by the West African postgraduate medical and surgical colleges, the immediate payment of all salary arrears, the implementation of the consolidated medical salary structure, a new hazard allowance, and the domestication of the medical residency training act among others the industrial action is taking a toll on patients especially those who cannot afford medical care in private hospitals to discuss uh, this more uh, we have the first vice president of the nigeria association of resident doctors dr namdi indi ezumawi he will be joining us via zoom uh, we made attempt to get the ministry of health but none of them was available to join us this morning dr namde good morning good morning good morning thank you for having me <clears throat> it's good to have you join us this morning uh doctor uh when this is the second time the doctors are, are, are going on strike this year. Um, the initial one was a five-day warning strike. And then if you look at it, between 2016 and 2022, under the administration of uh, President uh, Mo Mohammed Buhari, the, this association went on strike for about 128 days. That which comes to about four months of the year. So a lot of Nigerians are wondering, why does it look as if this problem has refused to go away. Yes, um, thank you very much once again for having me. Um, first of all, it's, it's really unfortunate that, you know, we have to always get to this level before we get things done. And what, what that really says is that, you know, the health, the health, the health system is actually in a crisis. We have to there's this level of distrust between the populace and the government. You know, just as you said, this is the second time we're going on strike this year. The first time we went on strike was a five-day warning strike in May. And we called off that strike at the instance of the federal government coming to, calling us to the table to sign a memorandum of understanding on these same issues. Now, we, after signing the Memorandum of Understanding, timelines and dates were given. For example, the issue of the one-on-one -on -one replacement. We had agreed with the federal government that this one-on-one -on -one replacement would be out by February. We had the secular will be out so that uh, it can empower the MDs to employ people that have exited the system. In that Memorandum of Understanding we signed in May, a timeline was given in that memorandum that it would the, the, the secular will be out by 5th of June. It was signed by the, the, Palm Sec, the, the permanent secretary of the various uh, ministries. And like, as, as I can tell you of, up until today, that secular is not yet out. You still hear promises and stories upon stories. So there is this level of distrust. There is this level of incomplete. Um, you know, the commitments are not there. And it's we are now forced to take this as part of our only alternative to try to get the government to actually do what they need to do. So that's really why these strikes have all, always come and gone and come and gone. And this time, we have decided to make sure that an action needs to be done for us to get back to work. Okay, Nigerians will be wondering now, you said you've been on, on, on the desk, you've spoken to the federal government about this, and then a memorandum of understanding has been signed, and then deadlines were not met. Now, if you were to sit down on the table now, a lot of demands have been made by the resident doctors now. What are those things that you can forfeit? And then maybe some of them will be answered before you go back into it, because, you know, as you said, a lot of them have timelines, but they've not been met. So what should the government be looking at? What's the most important for the resident doctors for them to pick up their tools again? 
Okay, so even from the communique we released, the, the, the demands, you will notice some of the demands where um, some of them, what was written was an immediate action. So we have low hanging fruits in those demands. We are sure that some of the demands we, we need to see a process at all. And we don't really need to go deep into that. But let me give you an example. The one on one replacement, what we are saying is that the government is not budgeting for a new employment. We're saying that you can't stop migration. People have left, some have remained behind. Placed so that that vacuum is not there. But we know that the process of employment takes about 11 months before the, the, the employment. So what we are looking for is a, a way that this employment can be seamless. And it, it's just a replacement. So you're not really bringing out um, a budgetary allocation for this new um, staff. You're just replacing for if, if, a, if, a, if a consultant leaves, you replace with a consultant. If a registrar leaves, you replace with a resident. If a nurse leaves, you replace with a nurse. So that's what we are asking for, so that the vacuum will not be there, because the work is telling on our members. If you know, the WHO gives the, the grading for, I mean, the stage grading for doctor to patient ratio as one to 600. In Nigeria, we're working at one to 10,000. And it's telling on people. People are breaking down. Every week we hear doctors dying. Every week we hear people breaking down in theater. Last week we had a doctor that felt, we well, just broke down in the theater while doing surgeries. You see surgeries are now postponed, surgeries are canceled, waiting time in the hospital is even longer, you know? So these are things that we feel that can be done immediately. It's just a policy matter. It's not really about, you know, dragging it for this long. It's just a policy matter, replace those that are meant to be replaced. The, the medical residency training fund, which was budgeted for in 2020, captured in the budget, since should have been released since the first quarter of the of the year for them to go for their exams, for the specialists to go for the exams. And this is August. We are getting into the last quarter of the year and still it hasn't been released. So these are some of the low hanging foods that we feel the government can address immediately such that this strike can actually be called up. All right, doctor. Um under the past administration, the resident doctors went on strike. And it appears as if all the things they were asking for, they did not get. That, that is obvious. Now, this is a new government. This government is barely two months, two weeks in office. There is no minister of health. Uh, so th there are some persons that argue that maybe the resident doctors should have waited a bit. Let the, 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 the minister be, be appointed for the Ministry of Health. And then you come up again with these demands. What do you say to that? Well, let, in, in the wisdom of the last administration, when that medical, uh, memorandum of understanding was signed, it was signed in the presence of the reconciliatory uh, ministry, which is the Ministry of Labor. But the Minister of, the Minister of Labor did not sign. It was the perm permanent secretary is secretaries in the various ministries. Because we envisage that a new government is coming and since this is a policy matter, um, the civil service, I mean, the government is a continuum. It was expected that since the permanent secretaries will still be around, then these issues should actually be sorted out. So it was actually envisaged and it was planned for. And we believe that some of these issues, just as we said, even some of the issues we listed out, some of them are issues that might require us to have more discussions with the government. But for these low-hanging fruits, I mean, something that was budgeted for, that's already in the budget, cannot be paid, or a policy to replace staff that has already been, uh, that have left the system. I mean, these are things that you, you re really don't require a minister to do that. Okay, let's say when two elephants fight, uh, the grass suffer, and in this case, Nigerians are bearing the brunt of this back and forth with the government. Now, a lot of um, uh, surgeries have been postponed, just like you mentioned at the beginning. A lot of people are visiting hospitals. Uh, consultants are meant to do the work at the moment, which, of course, they cannot do or go very far. Is this strike worth the life of Nigerians? Because we know that the doctors are very important and we depend on the doctors, resident doctors, for most of these things or the health management to be and, um, dealt, dealt with. What do you think? Are the lives of Nigerians worth this? 
I must say that um, the doctors, when strike like this happen, we are never really happy to um, be out. I mean, be out there, out of our workplaces, not performing our duties. But I just made a statement that we are now at a ratio of one to ten thousand doctors, but one doctor to ten thousand people, and our doctors are breaking down. People are leaving. People are dying. Those that are on ground are overworked. If we say we should keep on patching what is going on, the doctors might not render effective services. It's high time we come out and talk to the government. And that's why we're also asking for from other groups, you know, to come out and speak up that there is a problem that is existing. We know that nobody's happy. I'm not happy not being with my patients at this point in time. I don't even feel comfortable because I don't even know what I can do. But the truth is that you can't give 100% when you have all these issues pending, all these issues hanging. You can't work in good environments. You are not being paid. We have doctors that have not been paid salaries for three months, four months. I can mention institutions. But you see, we, we, we need to look at these things carefully. We need to understand that when they are not well taken care of, you can't expect them to bring out the best. And, you know, when we try to play this game of, you know, the usual game of blackmail, you know, it's, it's painful. But the truth is that the doctors are breaking down. All right, doctor. And we have to find a way. And if this is the only way we can to reach out to the government, then we have to do it this way so that they can come out and so that we can go back to our workplaces. All right, all right, Doctor, this particular strike commenced on the 26th of July. And on the 1st of August, there was a circular from the Ministry of Health saying that no work, no pay for the doctors. And in that statement, they actually stated clearly that this, this uh, decision was taken because reconciliatory efforts, uh, reconciliatory meetings uh, uh, proved abortive. So I would like to know, what was it that the government brought to the table and what was it that the, the doctors insisted on? Now, the, the, the Ministry of Health was quick to bring out a secular on no work, no pay. But what's difficult in bringing out a secular in replacing those that have, have left the system? You know, we, we, this is the same agreement that we had given dates and timelines. We have said, you do this by the 5th of June. And they were still not giving us anything tangible. Nothing concrete. Even to, at least let us see actions being done to make sure that these processes are put in place. Nothing has been done. Although we know as we speak, there are meetings have been called. We are currently even having some meetings today. We are hopeful that, you know, um, the outcomes of those meetings will be productive. Because as I can tell you sincerely, no doctor is happy just sitting down doing nothing. You have patients that even call you personally to ask you when are they coming for their surgeries. So you see, we, 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 feel, we hope that these meetings that are going to go on, at least some meetings have started from yesterday, going to go on, we hope that something productive will come back so that we can actually go back to our work. So no, but still a follow-up to mm. that. What is it that you're ready to, to you know, uh, meet the government halfway on? For instance, you're asking for a 200% increase in basic salary. Looking at the general uh, financial situation of the country at the moment, is this something that you're you are willing to negotiate on, you know? Yes, we, are, we, we, did, 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 we got that percentage based on our own calculations on the current economic realities. What we yeah. are so asking is if we can sit down and discuss these issues and then come to a conclusion. But, you know, as we said in our communique, there are low-hanging fruits that we have mentioned. The one-for-one -one replacement, the medical residency training fund. These are things that if can be addressed now, we can, you know, go back to work and start working. For those reviews and other things. I mean, the national body is also all, all already having discussions with the, with the government on that. So we know that it might not be an immediate process. So those ones can actually take some time before it's achieved. But for those ones that can be done immediately, we, we believe that the government should take action now. So you said some meetings have started since yesterday. So Nigerians might want to know, is there light at the end of the tunnel? You know, after all of this series of meetings, do we see this try coming to an end as soon as possible? We are hopeful 
we are hopeful that um, there, there will be light at the end of the tunnel. But you see, it's as I said, it's an issue of trust. We've signed a lot of agreements. We've signed and we're tired of signing. What we want is action. And the essence of these meetings is to see palpable action before um, um, the strike can be called off. But doctor, your union has uh, planned uh, to go on uh, protest from tomorrow. He plans to picket ministries of, of health at the federal capital territory and across the state. Uh, what impact do you think this would have? Well, as I said, we, we we are not happy just sitting down. I mean, calling off a calling a strike doesn't mean we should go home and sit. It's just to show you that we are not comfortable just sitting down at home. We want to come out and let the world know, let people know that this is the problem. This is what we are. These are the issues we are having. And if we can pick it and you know make a protest and make a statement, it shows that we are not comfortable. You know, if there's one thing calling calling a strike and sitting down in the house, but this is calling a strike and coming out to let the government know what they need to do and what where they have done or what, what the limitations they have so that we can sort out these issues and get back to work. We are really not comfortable just sitting down at home. So we hope that the protest would also um, give some form of publicity to our problems and then see if possible solutions can come up. Doctor, I think the fact that patients are coming to the hospital and are being turned back, the fact, the fact that patients are not seeing the doctors that they should, they should has given enough publicity to the strike. I, I think so. However, there are some Nigerians that feel that, well, um, we don't, it's not only doctors we have in this economy, we have uh, other professionals in this economy. And when you look at it, doctor, it appears as if among other prof all the professions in Nigeria, the doctors are not, they are faring a bit better than others. So there are some Nigerians that feel that, okay, why is it that is the doctors that keep going on strike, especially knowing how important they are to the system? I must say that in the register, in the registry of the Nigerian Medical, I mean the Medical and Dental Council, we have about 30, 30,000 doctors currently in the country. And I mean registered, that have registered for the year, their licenses based on their registration. And um, if you look at it, you have about 25,000 of them that are currently practicing. Now, it's if you notice the western world even from the east saudi arabia they come in their drones to push our doctors and that issue of brain drain is real i can tell you for a fact that it doesn't take anything for the doctors to leave the country but some have decided to stay back and some have decided to fix this country because there's no other country than ours if we don't take it serious that there is an emergency in the health sector, we will lose out. Our doctors, I mean, we do, we're not even talking about comparing what doctors are paid outside the country to what is being paid here. If you want to go in that direction, then nobody will even be in the country. You know, but we're saying that if we don't do something, based on our statistics, we've seen that remuneration is a problem. If we don't do something better than what is being done now, we will still lose in terms of the numbers we have. So it's really not about doctors being special more than any other profession, but it's about the fact that the health sector is getting into a, a dark zone. There is a crisis and we have to act. And some of us have to speak out so that the government takes reasonable action, you know, to keep those that you have. If not, other countries will come and push and take all our medical professionals. Other professionals are also living, not just the doctors, the nurses, the pharmacists, the lab scientists, they are all living. And it will surprise you when the numbers come out and how they are living. And if we don't make this known and take this action, it will get worse than what it is now. Do you truly believe that? What do you think the government can do to keep doctors in the country? Uh, what kind of pay and then what kind of... Because I've seen doctors, uh, when, they, when the strike happens, they talk about the fact that their hearts bleed whenever they, 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 they need to uh, op operate on a patient and then they don't have the necessary equipment and all of that. So what is it that the government can do to keep the doctors around? Okay, <clears throat> so 
We have actually, um, the, the Ministry of Health had actually set up a committee sometime last year um, called the Brain Drain Committee, where we had to marshal out policies and uh, things that could be done, you know, to keep um, medical professionals back in the country. You know, we had marshaled out some policies, even from the medical school level, uh, things that can actually be done to help to reduce this. But based on our statistics and based on the research that was conducted by the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors, we found out that the number one cause was remuneration. You know, so we know that improving the remuneration, improving policies, housing, loans, cars, I mean, there are other things that have been done in other countries that helps to keep these medical professions in, in their countries, you know, if, if the improvement of the infrastructure, you know, making the working environment more um, endurable. But, you know, this have been, the committee has been sitting for the past, in fact, it was part of that committee that brought about this policy on one-for-one -one replacement, you know. So we, what we're now asking for is, okay, implement what we already discussed, and then that's where the problem has arisen from. So if it's about what should be done by the government, I mean, this committee has been set up since last year and some recommendations have actually been given to the government. So what we expect is for implementation of some of those things, of which I said this one for one replacement was even one of the recommendations from that committee. So what were you told about the one-for-one -one replacement? What were you told? What is holding the implementation? Something must have been said. It was, okay, it was agreed upon as far back as February that this was the modality for that implementation. And from that agreement, we had now forwarded to the involved ministries, the uh, Office of the Head of Service, the Ministry of Finance, um, you know, salaries, income, and wages. <clears throat> now, for them to take action for the secular to be released from the office of the head of service. But up until now, that secular hasn't been released. We are awaiting um, the, the release of that secular, but we haven't heard anything tangible from that. So some, some people might want to ask, you know, the one of one replacement which the doctors have been talking about, how long does it take for this replacement to happen? Because if you have been clamoring about that, I think we need to know how this process works. Okay. Ideally, ideally, small exercise, it takes about 11 months for such um, replacements to occur. But with this new policy, what we're talking about now is it will take less than two months for that replacement to occur. Because you are not really, you know, in, in the normal replacement, there's a, there's a pattern it goes to. It goes, I mean, from the Office of the Head of Civil Service to the uh, Character Commission, you know, it goes all the way down. So by the time the, time the real lease comes out for replacement, I mean, eight, nine, eight to 11 months have gone. But in this case, what we ask for is, in, like, in an example, in teaching hospital, the MD receives a letter of resignation from a, a doctor. So that doctor that has resigned, that same space should just be given to another doctor, that same cadre, that same space. You know, so you don't have to go through all this process you know, of like a, a fresh employment. So if the secular now empowers the, the CMDs to actually replace that person that has exited the system so that there is no gap in the workplace. It's not like we're saying we're doing a, a fresh recruitment and all that. It's just a replacement. You, it still doesn't stop the, the annual um, re recruitment process that still takes place. This is just a replacement of that uh, clinical staff that has left the system so that that gap Will not have an effect. So the policy gave it in such a way that it can be done within a, a, a month, a month or two. So you don't have to follow, to go through all those long processes. So I mean, that's what that's what the one for one is all about. All right, doctor. The federal government has said mm -hmm. that uh, a, a register is going to be placed at the hospitals for residents who are ready to work. Aren't you worried that this could uh, break the ranks of members of your union? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we, we had our National Executive Council meeting on Saturday, and members came out. In fact, it was on Saturday that they, based on that, on that um, resolution from the government, that was where the issue of the protest came up. 
and the gov they insisted that if the government feels that the strike is the only tool that can be used to address that there are other tools that we can use to you know make our demands known and that's where the issue of um, the protest came out so i can tell you that members are resolute members are not i mean they are the ones suffering the brunt of these issues you know, so they are resolute and they feel if this is the only way that we can get the government to handle this. The, the, the secular on, I mean, on the register does not really change anything or affect the way members feel about addressing this issue. Doctor, you said they are the ones suffering the brunt of this issue. Are they really the ones or the patients? Well, I can tell you that I am not happy. I, I mean, that is my work. My work is to see to the well-being of patients and then i come and see that as i'm doing that my colleagues are also breaking down it's 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 terrible it's terrible we, we, it's not i don't know how else to express how we feel about this but it's terrible you can't do your work you can't i mean there's nothing else you can you, this is what you have been trained to do and then you find yourself not being in, and that's part of the reason why people even leave the country you know you don't enjoy practicing what you have been trained to do so, you see, we know the patients are also going through a lot, but I'm here to also state that the, the medical professionals are also going through a lot. And we feel that the government can actually address this. Aside the remuneration outside the country, do you think the, uh, you know, the workload is any better outside the country? Well, you know, there is joy in practicing medicine, especially when you have all that is available for you. Outside, we know there is the workload, but at the same time, it, you know, it, your, the remuneration balances out. So even if you feel that the workload is much, you still have something to fall back to. But in, in, in our country, I can't speak the same. It, I don't think it's the same. Uh, but uh, doctor, there's something I want to ask. The resident doctors go on strike a lot. It, it, it has become almost like every other three months. Once they'll go on strike, you hear the call of the strike. And bec before you can say anything, they're going again. Is, is it not time the union considers other options of seeking uh, redress to their problems, you know, of making their demands? And the, and the other options that the doctors can, can explore? Yeah, you know, yes, there is that option. But I can also say that apart from the last five-day warning strike in May, before then, the last strike was greater than more than a year ago. And, you know, that was because, you know, we tried to address, find other ways of, you know, being diplomatic and trying to, you know, extend to sort, sort out this issue. For example, the MOE, the Memorandum of Understanding was signed and said that these issues would have been sorted out by 5th of June. Today, we're in August. I mean, so you would you would want to ask what has happened between June, July, and August. There have been a lot of negotiations. There's been a lot of talking. There have been a lot of back and forth. But even till that, up until that, nothing had come out of it. So you see, sometimes the government needs to be, you know, these are actions that need to be taken sometimes for the government to also come to the table and discuss because if it's about diplomacy we have um, spread that a lot but still the results have not yet been palpable you know okay. when it when it comes to the issue of welfare almost every nigerian right now is either looking up to the federal government or looking to his or her employer to do something especially if, uh, with the subsidy removal so I, I, doctor, I know you know that other workers are also looking onto the government to do something about the subsidy removal, so to improve their welfare. So it's not just the doctors that are in a dire situation at the moment. So is it possible that the doctors will say, okay, we're going to call up the strike and allow the government some time to come up with something? It's, it's very possible. It's very possible for this to happen. But there must be some level of um, commitment. There must be some sincerity in dealing with the, the the health care sector you know and once this is palpable once we can see definitive actions that can be done i'm very sure that i mean as i said we don't have to um, address the nine or eight um demands that were written out there in the community 
we can show actions or even long-term, immediate long-term plans that can be taken out to also address these issues. So once those things have, put, have been put in place, we, we, I mean, we know what the country is going through. We know that they're, they're generally worldwide, the economic downturn and all that. But at the same time, we need to be, we need to save our country. We need to save our country. And it's very important, especially the health sectors. We know other health sectors and other sectors have uh, different problems, but we need to do something to save our health sector. And we need the government to also take that into consideration. Okay, I, I want to ask this question now because you think that maybe it's unnecessary, but it is. Like I said before, Nigerians are very this, and uh, if you go to the hospitals now, operations have been hold, uh, you know, for very scanty operations around uh, the hospital. What do you advise that Nigerians should do at this point? Because, yeah, we need medical attention, but we're not getting it, so what should we do? Well, I personally feel that other civil societies, people out there should also speak up because they go to the hospitals and see what is happening. You go and you see a doctor. I mean, in, in other countries, for example, you have a clinic and you say in your clinic, you're going to see 10 to 15 patients. And in each patient, you have to spend at least 30 minutes explaining and discussing. But when you come to our own clinics, you, I, I don't need to tell you the number of patients that are seated out there waiting for you. I don't need to tell you the time the doctor spends with the patient. You know, So we need others to speak out, not just the doctors. Let the patients also talk and say that things are not getting any better. Things are going down. They should also lay their experiences. Even the journalists, you know, to go and do some investigative journalism they're out there in the hospitals and see what is actually going on, see how people are being... I mean, the time people spend, uh, waiting time, how surgeries are being cancelled, and the number of doctors that are available. These are, these are things that should, should be said out in the, in the public, should be put out there in the public space, so that the government also realises that an action needs to be taken. So what we are calling for is for everybody to speak up, not just the health, um, the health workers, but everyone, even the journalists, to talk and speak and say what is happening there. And, and we are sure... That is a listening government. The government is a new government. It's a listening government. It wants to, you know, save its face and do what is necessary. So in that situation, I think most of these issues can actually be addressed and possible actions can be taken to solve them. All right, Doctor, you said that it's possible for the strike to be called off while you wait for the government. So what can the government do now to show that to show that it's committed to looking into your problems. What what can it do for you to trust it and then maybe call off the strike while you wait? Uh, like I said, there are some meetings that are ongoing. Um, some have happened yesterday, and I know I'm aware that I mean we're going to have some other meetings today and tomorrow. And we have laid out some of those things that we feel need to be done. You know, <clears throat> and... Um, I wouldn't want to preempt, but I feel that um, if these issues are actually discussed dispassionately and, you know, a level or a new level of trust is established between the government and the health workers, that this can actually be sorted out this week. So well, I'm hopeful that, that, that um, um, something would come out of these negotiations. We hope so, too. Thank you very much. All right. I think this is a good place to end the conversation this morning. Thank you very much, Dr. Namdi Indi Izuma, the first vice uh, president of the National Association of Resident Doctors for joining us this morning. We do hope that the meetings and all the talks that happen today will actually lead to the resolution of this uh, crisis because it is a crisis. Nigerians are it suffering. Is. And we do so that even the protest that you come for, for tomorrow does not have to hold. Thank you once again for joining us. We'll have you some other time. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. All right. We'll now go for a quick break. We'll return at the top of the hour. Thank you.